CataractCoach.com capsule break from viscoelastic bubbles. I've never seen this complication before. So I was watching YouTube and I saw a video of Shannon Wong. This one, empty capsule bag. Here comes viscoelastic. Pow, just like that capsule is open. That big bubble there under pressure ripped open that delicate four micron thin posterior capsule. Oof. Now, luckily, there's no vitreous prolapse and you already have a barrier of viscoelastic there. So this patient's getting a trifocal lens. He's adjusted the eye wall power down to account for an anterior positioning of the optic. Haptics are going to go behind the rexus, optic in front of the rexus, and the patient will be watched carefully in the post-op period. Now, amazingly, this isn't the first time Dr. Wong saw this. There's another case, here you go, empty caps or bag, ready to implant the lens, right? Viscoelastic going in, boom, there it is, causing a big break in the posterior capsule. Posterior capsule is wide open now. So that's a tough case. Now the good news again is that there is no vitreous prolapse and you have a tamponade from the viscoelastic that's gone in the eye. Hopefully the anterior hyaluronic base is intact. And this patient's gonna get a three-piece lens, so getting more viscoelastic and get those bubbles out of the way to visualize things. Very nice looking rexus. So in this case, gonna have a three-piece lens with the regular optic capture, meaning haptics are gonna go above the capsule in the sulcus, and the optic is gonna go behind the capsule rexus to be captured in place. So here comes the lens, looks like a three-piece silicone lens. And here's the leading haptic coming out, going in nice and easy. There it is. Make sure that goes right into the sulcus. And then the optic comes out, and then the trailing haptic can be put in the eye as well, and that can be positioned. Now, this is HPMC, hydroxypropyl methylcellulose. In both the cases here, Dr. Wong said it was the OcuCoat brand of HPMC, and that's a dispersive viscoelastic derived from uh, plant-type material, cellulose, and that's uh, has an advantage of being uh, very dispersive. You can coat the cornea with it as well. It's also relatively inexpensive, and it comes in a full 1cc vial here. And in some cases, like you've seen in these last two, there can be bubbles that with enough force, when they're being expelled, they can actually rip open that posterior capsule. And you got to remember, the posterior capsule is pretty wimpy. It's only about 4 microns thin. And so in a case like this, you really want to be very careful. So when you see a little bit of the bubbles coming out, maybe slow down the, the injection here. But again, this couldn't have been predicted. Dr. Wong says he's used this viscoelastic for 25 years and obviously tens of thousands of cases. And this is the first two cases where he saw it happen. So learning the hard way sometimes. Here's using a chopper and getting that lens dialed in. So again, this will be haptics going to be in the sulcus and then the optic is going to be captured. Now, if, if you're cautious, and you'll see a good amount of caution here, you should be able to complete this case without any vitreous prolapse. Now, in this patient, since the optic itself is going to be behind the anterior capsule rim, remember the haptics from the sulcus, plus this lens has a little bit of an angulation. It's not totally planar. Because of that, you don't really need to adjust the eye wall power. So the eye wall power can be the same as in the bag, because literally that optic is behind the rex is so technically in the bag or what's left of it. And then you can see beautifully centered lens. That's going to be stable for the patient's lifetime. That's a very nice outcome. Here on your IA, what should we do differently? I'd probably say here, you want to let me decrease the flow settings. I don't want to shake things up too much. So maybe I'd cut the flow in half, cut the vacuum in half. So maybe 200 millimeters of mercury, a vacuum, maybe 250, and maybe about uh, 25 to 30 cc's per minute of aspiration flow rate. And then just wash that out carefully. And then at the end, when you pull the eye probe out of the eye, obviously don't let the anterior chamber collapse. And so this patient will obviously do very well. And the lens will be stable for the entirety of the patient's life. And, you know, look at the good part. The, the upside, the patient's never going to need a YAG laser capsulotomy. Now, the first case shown here where it's a single piece trifocal lens, a single piece acrylic lens with trifocal um, optics, that's a little tougher because that was anterior to the rexus, that's a reverse optic capture, the first case that we showed you here. And that's with the haptics behind the rexus and the optic in front of the rexus. And again, there you have to lower the eye wall power to account for more anterior positioning. And again, those patients can do well um, in the long term. You just have to watch the patient a little more carefully. So just to show, just to show you, capsular complications can happen at any time throughout the whole surgery. And you know, when you 
Think about people devaluing what's this cataract surgery worth. It's not worth, oh my God, are you kidding me? This is a very difficult surgery with a very razor thin margin. And so we've got to be very, very cautious in these cases and make sure that we get a good outcome for our patient. And sometimes, again, you just can't predict what will happen here. At the end here, maybe put some triamcinolone in, but this looks like a great case. Everything ends well. So thank you, Dr. Wong, for sending the video in. I learned a lot and something new that I've never seen before.